last Hamas camp to Shalom. My lords, I was privileged to be a member of the delegation to Israel organized by Elnet and led by the noble lord, Lord Turnberg. We spent a day at the Gaza border at the crossing at Karam Shalom, where 500 trucks would go in and out of Gaza every day. We looked out on Gaza next to Zerot. We saw an Iron Dome battery, and 1,000 rockets had been fired in the four weeks before our visit. And we interacted with the Israeli parliament, ministers, with Fatah, the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, we visited Yad Vashem, remembering and commemorating the six million Jews killed in the Holocaust. And yet we came away from that visit dejected by the political situation in Israel at the time. How lucky we are to have the House of Lords. Israel does not have a Senate, does not have a check and balance. Fatah and Hamas do not talk to each other. There's been no democracy in the West Bank or in Gaza. And yet not once did we feel unsafe. In fact, we were really impressed by Israel being on top of their security situation, including with regard to Gaza. Who would have predicted what happened a few months later on the 7th of October when Hamas took Israel by surprise and brutally murdered 1,400 Israelis and took over 200 hostages? As the most reverend primate said, it was a pogrom. Last week, I was shown a film by the Israeli embassy of footage of the horrors of the 7th of October. It was horrific beyond belief, cruel, monstrous, barbaric. These are terrorists. These are inhuman monsters. What they did to babies, to children, to families, to old people, to Holocaust survivors was horrific beyond the worst possible nightmare. And this is just two and a half weeks after the 7th of October. We cannot forget the magnitude of that horror. Israel has to have the right to defend itself. Their aim is to dismantle Hamas, and this has to be allowed to happen. However, in doing this, it is tragic of the loss of life in Gaza, of the destruction that is taking place as a result of the airstrikes and shelling, and this is before a possible ground assault. The Palestinians in Gaza have been asked to move to the south, and yet bombing continues by Israel in the south. And the reason is because Hamas continues to operate from the south. It is firing rockets every single day from north and south, and Israel has to be able to attack the terrorists. But, as many noble lords have said, Israel must always operate within international law. We have to allow aid to get in to Gaza for the 2.2 million innocent residents of Gaza. Every Israeli minister we spoke to mentioned Iran. Why are we not prescribing the IRGC? It's about time we did it. Hezbollah. Iran is backing Hezbollah. They cannot be allowed to get into this war. The hostages must all be released now and not two by two, as the noble Lord, Lord Howard said. What is tragic about this war is it seems to have given rise to huge anti-Semitism. This is not a war between Islam and Judaism. This is not a war between Muslims and Jews. This is a battle of humanity against Hamas, a battle of humanity against terrorism of the most horrific and worst kind. This is a battle against sheer evil. And the UK, the United States, NATO, we must do everything we can to stop this war escalating. My lords, we are staring into the abyss. We're staring into the possibility of a World War III, and this cannot be allowed to happen. 9-11 led to NATO implementing Article 5 for the first time and only time in its history. It led to invading Afghanistan, where we were for 20 years. The Iraq War in 2003, with no plan for vict after victory, led to Syria, which led to ISIS. The Afghanistan withdrawal gave Putin the confidence to go into Ukraine and Afghanistan is now back in the hands of the Taliban. When are we going to learn? A few weeks ago, I spoke in the debate on the first anniversary of the Abraham Accords. Israel, the UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, establishing relations, tourism, business, trade, friendship, 
And in the debate, we spoke about the possibility of Saudi Arabia normalizing relations with Israel. How these developments, ironically, these developments of progress and peace have led to Hamas doing what they've done now. Because peace and friendship, peace and friendship are not in Hamas's vocabulary. Creating havoc and murdering is the objective of these cowardly terrorists who use human beings and children as shields. The vast majority, no, no, the vast, vast majority of Muslims and Jews don't want conflict. They don't want war. They want peace. As she was released as a hostage, Yoshevid Lifshidetz turned around and gripped the hand of one of the masked Hamas terrorists who had kept her captive and said, Shalom. What amazing dignity. Because Shalom means peace, harmony, and tranquility. And that is exactly what we need throughout the Middle East and the world today. Peace.